Hello. Just want to make sure that you can see everything. Don't need to see that. <clears throat> Let me just make sure everything's good. like it. Awesome. Whew. For a second there, everything was green. I don't know if you could see it, but I did. Okay, so it's 810 and it's time to start. You probably wonder why I start at 8.10 on Thursday sets because another demonstrator, a friend of mine, Julie, she um, comes on at 7.10 and she usually goes until about 8.10. Sometimes she runs late, but I wanted to have the opportunity to watch her demonstration before I did mine, so that's why I'm here at 8.10. So, my name is Teresa Tucker. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I have been with Stampin' Up! Um, running as a business for two years, almost. It'll be two years in July. And I've been stamping since 2006. Prior to that, I was creating scrapbooks. And actually, that's something that I want to do again. I want to try to set aside um, some time with you to do some scrapbooking. If that's something that you'd be interested in, just let me know. And... Um, I, a good friend of mine uh, gave me a bunch of, she gave me some scrapbooks, so I I take that as a challenge. I'm going to, I'm going to start using them and start filling in for my, my grandchildren. I've got three grandchildren, uh, two boys and a girl. The girl is six, she'll be seven in July, and the two boys will be uh, four and two in October, November. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I shut the fan off in here because I thought it was getting cold, but now it's starting to heat up again without it running. So tonight, we're going to use the Pansy Patch. This is the stamp set that goes with a set of um, Designer Series paper. And I showed this last week, and I don't know if you were here or not, but I'll just get this out and show you some of this paper. So it comes with 12 sheets, I believe. Um, let's see. Oops. So on the Designer Series paper, um, it tells you how many sheets. There's 12, yeah. And then also all the colors, the Stampin' Up! colors that will coordinate with the designer series paper. So we get six sheets, two of each, and they're double-sided. So that's uh, this one here. And actually, we're going to use this uh, um, Fresh Freesia tonight. This is the um, gingham that we're going to use. There's another one, and then here is the soft succulent, fresh freesia. I said fresh freesia we were going to use tonight. We're not. We're using pale papaya. <laughs> uh. So that's about it. I think I've shown you the back sides and front of everything. Yep. So, um, besides that, we're also going to use these. This is called the basic border dies. These dies are uh, meant to be used for borders, and I'm going to show you how that works here in a little bit. And let's see. Here are the dies. These are the dies that go with the Pansy uh, stamp set. So it's Pansy Patch, but then it's Pansy Petal uh, Sweet. So the pansy dies 
in the pansy patch. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, let's just set that aside for a second. This is the Pale Papaya cardstock. So this is eight and a half by five and a half, and you score it at four and a quarter and fold it in half to make your card base. And we're going to add, let's see here. This, this is the pale papaya that's gonna go on the front, but it's actually going to be layered on top of this Mary Merlot. So the Mary Merlot will act more as a background. And I've got another piece of uh, very vanilla cardstock to go on here, but I want to show you how to cut this using the mini stamp cut and emboss machine. And these dies. So we have a choice of six different dies. And I think I'm going to use this one. So each one of them, you can see here, they're stitched. Each one of them are stitched. This here, um, it kind of reminds me more of clouds, and I would probably go, just cut a piece of cardstock with that and then use it as a mask. And then the zigzag. Um, this one, I haven't decided what I would use that one for, but these, yeah, we'll have to play with them. I'm not really sure. We'll figure out. So thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. So we're going to lay this against the pale papaya. And I want to cut this along the edge because I cut this pretty narrow. It's only two inches and I don't want a lot of it cut off because I want enough of it to show. So I'm going to use a little bit of tape to hold this in place. And then you want to make sure that this isn't hanging over the edge because if it is, it won't cut and you want it to cut and that didn't hold it well, did it? Okay. Sometimes the washi tape is not the best. You can only use it a few times and then it's it gets loses its stickiness so let's try this again I'm gonna rub this um, post-it note on my shirt because I don't want it super sticky either and sometimes um, the stronger ones can tear your paper all right so we'll run this through we got several things to run through the stamp cut and emboss machine tonight. Because rather than doing everything in advance, I really like to show you how to use everything. So we'll close that. Take that off. And then there's our edge. Isn't that pretty? So that was made with this zigzag one, not the small zigzag like that, it's the little bit larger zigzag. And these again are basic border dies, you can get these in my store. I'm at teresatucker.stampinup.net. Alright, the next thing is now, this next piece I'm going to show you, this is the Very Vanilla. And I ran it through the Painted Texture 3D folder. I ran this through on the large um, stamp cut and emboss machine because it's too big to go through the mini. So I went ahead and did this in advance so I didn't have to turn around and uh, run this through. But this is what it looks like. This is the Painted 3D Texture. Isn't that pretty? So we're going to put this on here. 
just layer this onto the Mary Merlot. And there's two sides. So this one um, is not as raised as this one is. Sometimes it's a toss up. But yeah, I think the other side is more raised. So we're just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue along the outline and around the outside and crisscross through the middle. Okay, that looks pretty good. The nice advantage of the liquid glue is that you can still move the cardstock around a little bit if you need to center it a little bit better. I'm going to bring this in and we're going to put this right here. been using this designer series paper quite a bit just playing with this stamp set I'm gonna have to buy more because it's I love it but I like pansies always have I just think they're so pretty there's a little bit of glue right there um, if you ever get glue on your cardstock just wait till it dries and then you can take it off Okay, so let's see here. All right, so with this set, and I'm gonna try to hold it like this so that it doesn't um, glare as much, but there's a lot of pieces. So these are all of your stamps and these are all of your dies. So the best way to tell you how these all go together is that this, will be this will go on top of that so you could stamp this in a uh, light color and then that one in a darker one over top of it same here this is the same thing only smaller leaves and then you've got your large pansies and the beards to go with them and then this is the smaller one and the beard to go with it so this one here i'm going to show you how these work so because we're going to i'm going to stamp a couple but You'll stamp this one first and then that one, and I'll show you why. And then, let's see, we're also going to use, we're not going to use the stamps for these, but we will use the dies. And so here are the dies, like I showed you a moment ago. And all of these are just, um, these cut out images on the designer series paper. So there's a couple of pages in there that have just pictures on them. And you can use those to cut them out. And let me see. I well, I got this out the other day when we were working, when we were playing with this set. So here's the paper. And here is the die that will cut this out. So you would simply cut out around this piece and then run it through your stamp cut and emboss machine with this die on it and it'll cut it out perfectly. The same thing with the smaller ones. These also fit and you can run those through just like this one here. That makes for a nice quick card. Okay. All right. So let's see. How are we going to go about this? I think I think what we'll do is um, first we'll start out with this is a piece of the pale papaya and that's what we're going to do the center of our flower with. So we would we would do this main section with this. So we only need one of those. And I think that's it that we need for that. And then we'll need this is a 
three by three. And with this, we're going to cut the beard out for this one. And we'll cut the beard out for the larger one. We do need two of these, so these will actually turn over. We'll need two of those, one of these, two of these, one of these, and we will need one of these and one of these because that's the inside of the that's the inside of this flower like that and then I think that's it for these two colors let's get out the stamp cut and emboss machine and run these through So these plates are numbered one, two, and two, and the instructions are on the plate of how to build this sandwich is what they're called. It's called a sandwich. Okay, so I've only made um, one other card with the cutouts. I've done them with when I've cut out the images, but I've only made one card cutting out all the individual pieces. So this is the bearded part that we need. This will be the beard that goes with this one. So I need one more. And then I also need the center piece. And I'll show you that when we start putting this flower together. Very carefully. Here's that one. And here's the center of the flower. So we can put these back. Put this one back, put this one back. Okay. Now we're gonna run these through. So I need one of these, two of these, and one of these. This will be the actual flower. I think I might have to turn my fan back on. It's getting warm. Earlier it was a little, um, it, was, it's a, it was a lot less humid this evening. So um, we ended up shutting one of the doors. But now there's not much of a breeze. So I have to open, or might have to turn that fan back on. So when you're using your stamp cut and emboss machine, if you offset the plates a little bit, they go through easier. It's almost like when they're all stacked on top of each other, it's, it's too much. It just doesn't want to grip. All right, so there we have those. And then remember we have to do one more of these. So please like and share my video and if you're watching me if it's it's a 
if it's a replay or if you're watching it on YouTube, please, um, please subscribe to my channel and remember to like the video. Uh oh. Let's start this again. And this is kind of what happens sometimes if they're stacked to, if they're stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to stagger it, see if I can get it to go through this time. Come on, Betsy. We will be getting um, magnetic plates. As soon as Stampin' Up! releases them, I know they're working on them. I don't know when we'll have them. But that'll make life a little easier. There we go. All right, so there's the pieces for the flowers. Now, next, let's just go ahead and finish cutting out everything that we need. So here is a two and a half by three and a quarter piece of Evening Evergreen. This is one of the new in colors. And with that, we're going to cut out this stem for the other, for the flower that's going to come out on top and then we're going to cut this out twice because this is going to go over the top of the leaf My husband made dinner tonight, but he makes dinner most of the time, and he makes my breakfast and my lunch. <laughs> I'm working a full-time job at the university, and then I'm also running this business full-time, so I it takes a lot of time, and he's so nice to make dinner, especially, because usually for, usually I don't eat breakfast, but for lunch sometimes I'll have some eggs. We've been following a sort of keto diet, but I'm getting tired of what we've been eating for the last two months, so I need to find some more recipes. So if you know of any good keto recipes, you can send them to me. That'd be wonderful. Okay. Let's, um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut these, poke those through. Those fell out when I picked it up. Perfect. This is the take your pick tool. It's nice for um, poking the centers out of those when they're stuck in there. And then also this other end is kind of like a spatula. I've used this end to go between um, two pieces of cardstock. If it's if I'm trying to get it up because I need to shift it or something, I can use this to kind of get underneath it and pull it apart. And this end is, it's got a little bit of putty in there so I can pick up small pieces of embellishments. And then there's another piece that goes with this and it's the brush that we, that we use to, um, we run it over these pieces to get the pieces out, just like this one. All right, so we've got two leaves and we've got this piece and this and we've got this piece let's see what are we missing um i think i need let's see here i think it's this piece no actually Here we 
go. I need this one in the Mary Merlot. So I have to grab, here's a piece. There's lots of pieces. Making sure that you get the right ones. Come on. Don't be so stubborn tonight. There we go. All right, so now we've got that piece. And See here. Does this go together like that? I think so. That looks right. It might be this one though. So I'll go ahead and cut that out in case we need it. Okay, so the only other thing that we need now is the outside the leaves, the actual leaf, which would be this. So we'll need two of these. So thank you for joining me this evening. I really appreciate you being here and if you're watching this later and now please like and share for me I'll put your name in a drawing if you share I'll send you one of my cards There's our leaves. Now, I think we have it all. I'm going to get up and turn that fan on, though, because it's hot. I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, that'll be much better. All right, I think that's everything. Um, we'll just, um, so we've got our leaves, we've got the top part, we've got these three petals, we've got this one, these go here, and this will go with the petal as well. Oh, the one thing that we didn't cut out yet is the center of the, um, the very center of the flower so let me I think I'll get some daffodil delight for that looking for a piece of loose any though. All right, so yeah, let's just run these through real quick. This will cut out three and we only need one. And I'll save the other two. I've got a drawer where I keep all of my extras. Right there. All right, so there's that. All right, I think it's time to start putting it together. All 
All right. So let's work on this. This is going to go on here. And this one will go on here. So the other card that I made like I said, I've only done this once. Um, I didn't use two petals here at the top, and I think I should have. But, you know, <clears throat> when you're playing, getting to know the product, sometimes it takes a little while. So this is my craft sheet, and it prevents, it, nothing sticks to it. So no glue, no tear and tape, no stamp and seal, anything. Nothing like that sticks to it. So I'm going to use it while I'm putting some liquid glue on here. And it doesn't take much. And you want to be careful when you're using the liquid glue because it'll come out fast. Because I store it upside down so that it's always ready. I've got this nifty little holder. And if you want one, I have one, and I'd send it to you. They're $5. Okay. And it stores the glue like this so that it always stays, it's always ready. And like I've said before, when it when you use the liquid glue, you can kind of move it around a little bit for a little bit <laughs> before it sets up. So there's that piece. Now let's go on to this one here. I love the pale papaya. I think it's pretty. And it's a, this uh, Mary Merlot is a good contrast for it. So you probably wonder <clears throat> how I decide what colors to put together. Well, Stampin' Up! has a list of colors. So they used to have color wheels, but now they've got a list with um, pictures of each color and then every color that coordinates with it. They have that listed with it. And that's something that I want to put on my blog and I just haven't gotten to it. My blog is tuckertopnotchdesigns.blogspot.com and um, you can see my projects there. I, I include printable instructions and I also include, um, let's see here, there we go, um, a list of supplies that I use. So scooch that just a little bit right there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Now, where's our, where's the piece that I cut out like this? Oh, here it is. I must have picked it up somehow. All right, so let's put these on the leaves. So pansies come in all sorts of colors, so you can kind of go crazy and put together some pretty neat uh, color combinations. This will be easier if I hold it in my hand. 
Oops. My thumb's in the way. Here we go. <laughs> okay. There we go. <clears throat> All right. There's that one. I've got some tweezers to pick these up with. And uh, sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. Just depends on if I want to reach around and get them out. Let's move that out of the way. So I did end up cutting two of those out, and I didn't need both of those. All right, so now we're going to um, take a little dimensional. <clears throat> we're going to use mini dimensionals and then the regular size dimensionals as well tonight. And I've got some minis that are already open. And I've got some of the large ones that are open. I like to use my pick tool for these dimensionals because they're easy to pick them up and lay them down. So that's going to overlap a little bit. Looks really big. Okay, first I'm going to put this little beard on there. And this is going to go right here. And these are actually just going to go together like this. And then this is going to sit up here like that. So I'm just pushing this up far enough so that the, the outline reaches the, the flower, the actual flower. All right, so I'm gonna hold this down and then I'm gonna put a dimensional right here. And the other one right here. put this back up here. Like that. Whoops. Okay. So on the back I will I'll put dimensionals on the back when I get ready to put this all together. Okay. So I'm going to put the center here. And I used uh, delightful delight or um, daffodil delight. 
I could have gone with a sosafron though. Let's see what we think. Let me try the sosafron. We'll see if I've got any in here. I see something. No, nothing in that drawer. That's another Daffodil Delight. So let me get a piece of Sosafron. Excuse my arm. Okay. All right. So this is Sosafron. We're going to test it and see if we like it better than the Daffodil Delight. I'm going to turn this over so it doesn't stick. So we're going to take our stamp cut and emboss machine out again. And we'll get our little three pieces again. Here we go. <clears throat> we'll just run this through real quick and then we can kind of decide if we want something bright or something a little more muted like the Sosafron. doesn't look like there's a whole lot of difference when it's laying down here but there is you I don't know if, how well you can see it from there but you can see the difference so let's put the sosafron in the center and see what we think Maybe add a little bit more glue And it kind of just falls right into place. I like that. What, is, what do you think? Thank you, whoever is liking my video. I appreciate it. And I'm so glad you're here. All right, so now we still have this to put together, but we're not going to do that until um, we get ready to put it on the card. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and adhere this to the front of the card. These are the layers that we worked on first. This is the Mary Merlot. And then it's got the, um, this is the pale papaya that we're setting it on. And this is the pale papaya gingham. And then here we have the very vanilla cardstock that we ran through with the um, 3D paint texture folder earlier. Well, I did it before we got together because I had to use my larger stamp cut and emboss machine and it didn't, um, there's not a lot of room over here where I do my filming. So here we are. So here's this. And we'll put our leaves in here. Now, how should we do this? Should we put the leaves, should we put one on each side or put two together? Sometimes when I'm trying to figure out where the leaves should go, I'm like, well, I don't want them to look like ears. These are like puppy dog ears. <laughs> then I don't want it to look like that. How about that? Do you like that? Let me know what you think. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna leave my leaves right there for now. And I'll get some large dimensionals and we'll get these on the back and that'll kind of help the flower stay together so it doesn't wanna move around.
even though this is it's got a lot of parts and pieces to it it's fairly easy to put together I mean I have to watch videos sometimes too so it's um, and I just like to pass on whatever I've learned to you Nah, eh, maybe not. There we go. Okay, so we'll just take the backs off of these. That one's off. Okay. Now, I don't want my leaves under there yet. I think I've left enough room. Okay, so I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on the back of these. Put this back in here. And then this one. So now we just have this piece and we're going to glue it down, but I think we're going to put this with it first before we start putting it down because this is going to have to glue on top of it. Maybe it goes like that. There we go. Okay, we'll put a little liquid glue on it. I'm only going to put it on these two inside. See where it bees off like that? The outside ones don't actually touch the flower, just the inside. a dot there. I don't know why, but it just seems like to me I do, it's easier, whoops, it's easier if I can hold it in my hands. So remember what I told you before, if you get glue on your cardstock, don't try to remove it. Wait for it to dry. And I'll show you how to get that off. I'll take this out so I don't forget to show you. And then this piece will go right here. See how that goes together. This video will be live. Well, not live. This video is being recorded and it will be uploaded here and it'll also be on my YouTube channel. And then as well, it will be, I will link to it on my blog. Okay, that looks about right. What do you think? I'm not going to glue this part down. I don't, well, maybe I'll just put a touch on there. Because it's probably going to stay together once I glue the flower down. Okay, there we go. So all we have left to do now is our, um, we need to do the inside and we're gonna stamp a flower on here. So I'm gonna show you how the stamps work. 
and then we're going to put a happy birthday or something down here at the bottom. And we've got some embellishments to add too. I'm going to bring those over here to the table so I don't forget about those. Whoops. Let me get some things cleared away here. I'll put these extra pieces in my drawer. Excuse my arm. Sorry about that. All right, so we're going to put this on the inside of the card. So it's going to go right in here. And I want to just put a, um, a little pansy down here in the corner. <clears throat> I do need... Because, because these um, stamps are photopolymer, they need a little bit of cushion underneath them. Now, when you purchase our rubber stamps, they're fine. They don't need any cushion. They've got the cushion built into the rubber. But when you're using these stamps, excuse me, I gotta get a drink. You need to add the, you need to add the extra because, I mean, you can still stamp it without this pad. This is the Pierce mat that Stampin' Up! sells. And you can you can use it, but you're not going to get as clear of an image. It won't be quite as crisp. So when we stamp the pansy, we're going to stamp the bearded part first. Why? Well, because it's the part that um, you're going to be able to see through the stamps when you get ready to stamp the other section of it. Let me see which way this goes this way. We'll stamp right here. I'm going to set that aside because I'm going to need it again. And here's the pale papaya. This is going to be the center. This is going to be the actual color. And excuse my head if you can see it. I apologize. I just need to line this stamp up this is called two-step stamping it's not too bad and then for the bearded piece i'm going to go back to the um, mary merlot to stamp this Okay, and then we have the Daffodil Delight for the center. Okay, so that's your pansy. I'll put this aside. So I have a piece of one inch uh, very vanilla cardstock that we're going to make our um, we're going to stamp both of these this one here we're going to stamp probably with happy birthday and this one wishing you a little extra happiness just because you're you or we could do thank you the little things you do make such a big difference what do you think you can weigh in let me know what you think Let's do thank you. Let me get a small block for that. And I'm going to use Mary Merlot to stamp that. So one thing, whenever you're getting ready to stamp, use your stamps, your sentiment, you want to make sure that it's on the block straight. So that looks pretty straight. And then you can line your cardstock up with the grid paper to make sure that it is also straight. And I'm going to set this in just a little bit because I'm going to cut the end here. I'm going to put it through my label punch. OK. 
Okay. Oh, before I put this away, let's go ahead and stamp here. Um, let's see, I'm doing the little things. I don't think I've used this one yet. Nope, I haven't. Let's make sure that it's straight. Looks pretty good. Okay. I'm happy with that. I'm going to set that aside for a second and grab this. And this is called the Lovely Label Punch. So we're going to put this through here. So this will cut uh, an inch, a quarter of inch, and a half inch label. So this is an inch, so it's going to slide right here onto the widest point. And then down here, you want to turn your punch over like this because you want to be able to see where it's lining up. So I'm noticing that this little um, indentation here and then how far it's coming over here on this side is not quite the same on the other side. So I'm going to try to get that centered just exactly where I want it and then punch. So I want to put my thank you here. So I'm going to cut this off right here at the edge. And I'm going to glue it down instead of putting it on dimensionals. So just a little bit of liquid glue. It really doesn't take a lot. You just want to use it kind of sparingly because you don't want it to like leak out over the edges. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm trying to remember where it was that I saw a little bit of glue. Well, right here, there's a little bit, but if you take your eraser like this, it's like a rubber eraser. Stampin' Up! used to sell them, but they don't any longer. It'll take that right off, and you just keep working at it a little bit, not too hard. You just want to do it gently, and that'll start to ball up so that it you can just brush it away. All right, so now we're ready to put the inside together. Okay. I think we're almost done. Let's see. That's pretty. All right, so now we have some embellishments to add. <clears throat> so when I purchased this suite, one of the things that was included with it was these little bumblebee trinkets. If you haven't seen these, they're so adorable. Look at that. Isn't that cute? It's just the cutest thing. Now, when I was a kid, I always went barefooted, and I always stepped on a bumblebee every summer with the summer without fail. I would step on a bumblebee, and then I would run home crying. Mom would get the stinger out, and it'd all be better. <clears throat> okay. 
Do you think I'd put shoes on though? No. <laughs> Okay, so where are we going to put this little bee? Should we put him here? We could put him down here somewhere. What do you think? Should we put him that way? All right, so for this, I'm going to use the mini glue dots. They're just little dots of glue and you can remove it with your pick tool or you can put your element right on there, right in the center like that, and then pull it up and the glue comes off. All right, I think that's it. That does it. So tell me what you think. Like my video, share, if you are watching this on my YouTube channel, please um, like it and also um, hit that bell. I'd love for you to subscribe as well. And then just hit that bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. So I told you earlier that I made another, um, this was the first one that I did. And I realized that um, I probably should have flipped this had the um, evening evergreen on the top of the, let's see, what color is that? It's one of the new ones. Um, 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 um. Takes a while to learn them. Soft succulent. This is soft succulent and evening evergreen. And that is, um, You know, you would have to ask. <laughs> oh, brother. It is actually the fresh freesia. Fresh freesia. So, so, let me know what you think. And um, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You have no idea... How much it means to me to have you here it's so appreciated so those are the cards and I think that wraps it up for tonight and I will be back here on Monday with a mystery card so be sure to check my blog check my Facebook I will have things posted for that it'll be at seven o'clock on Monday evening so that's it for now bye bye